happened here happened before. Captain, are you in range? And it eats. This is Dana. We have a situation with the impound vehicle. To rebuild itself. This 23rd spring is a call to arms. As we've mentioned before in this series, horror threequels, or from any movie genre in fact, are notoriously hard to nail in terms of quality. So, I won't dwell for too long about which part threes have historically worked, and which should be pinned to the wall to rot like one of the creepers' victims. However, as we all know, dollar signs in the eyes of studio execs can be a dangerous thing, and if there's a franchise primed and ready to be milked for all it's worth, just one last time, those suits will make it happen, for better or worse. Which, my dear fellow gorehounds, brings us nicely around to a franchise that had much potential for multiple instalments, Jeepers Creepers. The first movie was a pleasant surprise, with a cool opening scene that paved the way for an equally cool and original villain, to lop off heads and pin corpses to walls and ceilings. The sequel, imaginatively titled Jeepers Creepers 2, followed the first movie a short two years later in 2003, and, as highlighted in our previous episode on the series, was a fun, watchable, but bang average horror flick. So, despite its long gestating development, could Jeepers Creepers 3 bring the creeper back for a kick-ass, gory, all-consuming treat with part 3? Stay tuned to find out here on what the f**k happened to Jeepers Creepers 3. The great part about the first movie in the Jeepers Creepers series was that after the tension and suspense that was built up in the opening act, the reveal of the antagonist spawned a memorable villain, deserving of some decent movies. Sure, the quality of the opening film may dip slightly once the creeper is revealed, but its mythology is fairly original and intriguing. The ancient demonic creature feeds upon human beings for 23 days every 23rd spring, which seems pretty excessive. Most sensible folk would settle for an all-you-can-eat buffet at the local KFC. The creeper eats lungs so it can breathe, eyes so it can see, and basically whatever it eats becomes part of it. The first two movies set up a series where the creeper was positioned front and centre, and despite some aforementioned flaws, they were enjoyable in their own right. A third entry should have helped to establish the mythology and provide a continuing springboard for the villain to thrive upon then. One person who thought a part three would be a good move, or was at least happy with another steady paycheck, was returning writer slash director Victor Salva. As soon as the second movie was released, to less than favourable reviews, rumours of a potential part three soon began to surface, and it wasn't too long, 2006 in fact, before it even had a working title, Jeepers Creepers 3, The Creeper Walks Among Us. MGM planned to release it as a DTV title, but struggled to find funding. Unfortunately, it would be stuck in development hell until the script was written by Salva with a new, absolutely terrifying title, Jeepers Creepers 3 Cathedral, and with Gina Phillips returning as Trish. The movie was officially given the ghoulish green light to begin filming in early 2016, under Myriad Pictures. However, director Salva's 1988 conviction for sexual misconduct with a 12-year-old meant that filming in Vancouver, BC was halted due to talent agencies sending out a warning about his criminal past. The film eventually began production in 2017, this time in Louisiana instead of Vancouver, which more closely replicated the Florida setting of the first movie. Alongside the return in Phillips, the cast also included Jonathan Breck, who returned as a devilishly handsome creeper, Stan Shaw as Sheriff Tashtego, Brandon Smith as Sergeant Tubbs, and Joyce Giroux as Deputy Lang. We also get Gabrielle Hoff as Addie, plus her grandmother Galen Brandon, played by Meg Foster, whose son Kenny was killed by the creeper and appears to his mother in eerie visions she has of him. The threequel is set between the events of the first and second films in the franchise. The exact time period within the movie is not explicitly stated, but it is established that the story occurs during the Creeper's feeding cycle, which as we all know by now, 
happens every 23 years for 23 days. The action picks up more or less immediately after the events of the first movie and tries its best to do something new and interesting with the franchise, to more than mixed results. There's more emphasis on the Creeper's previous human slaughtering vacation from 20 years ago, both with the living and the supernatural. The main protagonist this time around is Addy, who lives with her grandmother on their struggling farmstead. So, the cast was okay, the premise for the movie is a nice departure from the norm, and with so much potential gory goodness to be found in the Creeper's past bloodbaths, could part 3 provide a fun romp for the series? Unfortunately, the simple answer to that is no. Despite the Creeper again being a worthwhile villain, the rest of the movie is a low point in the franchise. Plot-wise, it's fine, but the characterization is lacking any real substance, with Addie moping around and her grandmother shouting at ghosts that only she can see. We're also introduced to a kick-ass, seemingly hard-as-fuck paramilitary task force made up of Creeper survivors, led by Stan Shaw. They all wear matching hats and a shoulder patch, with a cute image of a skull and the creature's wing. To be fair, a kindergarten class could have come up with a logo more badass than these tough lads did. Their massive truck-mounted chain gun is also ludicrous, but at the same time, comically awesome. The movie also attempts to expand the creature's mythology by making some interesting alterations to his rusty ride, bringing it to life with the ability to drive itself and fire off explosives. I know we're supposed to suspend our disbelief while watching a movie about a lazy ass creature who can't be bothered to get his hunt on for over 20 years, but giving him the ability to somehow enchant his vehicle is taking matters a touch too far. Or is it? Let us know in the comments if you think the movie stretches all credibility to its limits, or if we should just crack on with the more unbelievable elements. Plot threads are also left unanswered, with much made of an artifact found on Addy's farm, only for the tantalising promise of it perhaps having an effect on the creeper never being fully explained. It's a shame that we also never get a rousing climax, or a final battle with the creeper, which I guess was the idea to set up the events for the second movie, but it's very anticlimactic for no real good reason. Jeepers Creepers 3 had a limited two-day release in theatres, once on September the 26th, 2017, and also an encore event where it was screened again on October the 4th. The movie grossed $2.3 million in the US and $1.7 million in other territories making a worldwide total of $4 million. It was the third biggest movie at the box office on September 26th, behind Kingsman The Golden Circle and It. The film was also released on DVD and Blu-ray on December the 26th, 2017. While this limited release was in contrast to the admittedly superior first two parts, what was the critical reaction? Dread Central, whose reviews are generally fair and well-balanced, gave the movie a generous three and a half stars out of five, saying, At the end of the day, if you're a fan of the franchise, you'll be happy with this latest entry, which for my tastes is better than the second, but just falls short of the goodness and quality of the original experience. Less favourable were IGN, who said the movie was, An unremarkable entry in a cult favourite franchise. Jeep as Creepers 3 offers fans too little to get excited about. While the monster still rules its slice of country highway and the skies above it, the rest of the film crashes in the cornfields. So there we have it, my wonderfully twisted fellow gorehounds. What we have here is a threequel that doesn't live up to the promise of the first two movies, but at least tries something fresh with the franchise. It may have been the last movie in the series that Victor Salva had any involvement with, despite having a treatment in place for part four, but that hasn't stopped a reboot from emerging in 2022, called Jeep as Creepers Reborn. There's an entirely new production on board for what they consider to be a restart for the franchise. So stay tuned to our channel to see if the reboot is a strong new beginning for the Creeper, or if he should have stayed in his lazy slumber for a little longer. More importantly though, what's your take on part 3? Let us know in the comments, and we'll see you wonderful gorehounds next time. Thanks for watching.